There is a common consensus among Christian scholars that the rapture of the church is the next event on God's prophetic timeline. It is one of the great hopes of the Christian faith, and it is shrouded in mystery. It is described as the blessed hope. It is what Christians all across the world are looking forward to. It is what Christians all across the world are anticipating and looking forward to. They are longing for this day. They are yearning for this day. They are waiting. They are waiting for the day that they will see the Lord Jesus Christ. The day they will see him in all of his glory. The day they will see him in all his majesty. They are waiting for the day that they will be taken. Even as I am preaching this sermon, their hearts are crying out the words of the penultimate verse of the Bible, Even so, come Lord Jesus. They are desperate to be with their Lord. They are tired of this world and all of its heartbreak and sorrow. They are tired of the corruption that is in this world. And all they want is to spend eternity with their Lord and Savior. Even so, come Lord Jesus. They are not in love with this world, they are in love with Jesus. And they are waiting for the rapture. They are waiting for that glorious day when the Lord Jesus Christ shall break through the skies and the dead in Christ shall rise first, followed by millions of Christians, millions of North American Christians, millions of South American Christians, millions of African Christians, millions of Asian Christians, Millions of European Christians, millions of Oceania Christians, shall all rise up and be taken. Never ever for a moment believe you are alone. God is a big God, and He has people who worship Him and adore Him in all corners of the earth. You have brothers and sisters in Christ all across the world. You have brothers and sisters in Christ in this world and we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, should defend one another, support one another, and unite together. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, billions of people on the earth will miss the rapture. Unfortunately, billions of people will not be taken during the rapture and they will be left behind because they have rejected Jesus Christ. The rapture is going to be the most sudden and shocking event in the history of time and its effects shall in no doubt be devastating. It will literally reshape the world. Nothing in the history of mankind will have the same effect as the rapture. What will the media reaction be to the rapture? How will the world attempt to explain the sudden disappearance of millions and millions of people? What amazes me, what shocks and amazes me, is that there will still be people who will reject the gospel. Although millions of people will seemingly vanish from the face of the earth, there will still be people who will reject the validity of the Bible. The facts will be naked in front of them. The fact that all the people who would have suddenly disappeared had one thing in common, and that one thing they had in common was not their background, or ethnicity, or social status. The one thing they all had in common is that they were all disciples of Jesus Christ. That reality will be standing right in front of them, and people will still reject the gospel. However, there will also be some who will accept the gospel because their loved ones who they used to view as slightly strange would have been raptured. They will realize that they were right. They will realize that my mother who faithfully went to church every weekend was right. They will realize my strange brother-in-law who kept telling me about Jesus and the rapture was right. They will realize that every time their mother tried to get them to go to church was simply because their mother loved them. And they will open up the Bible and read it with a newfound curiosity to find out what will happen next. The people left behind after the rapture 
will think back into the past, all the past missed opportunities to meet Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 24, verses 40 through 41. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill, one will be taken and the other left. One will be taken and one will be left. How will unbelieving parents cope when their believing children are suddenly caught up. All over the nation, all over the world, there is no doubt that great puzzlement will catch up with people. One will be taken and one will be left. Unbelieving people who have their loved ones outside the country will never get to hear from them anymore. Phone calls will not be responded to. Messages will not be replied. All over the nation, all over the world, there is no doubt that the world will be puzzled. I believe this will be one of the events that will allow the Antichrist to gain more power and influence. The world at this stage will be looking for answers. When the rapture happens, the world will be looking for answers, and the Antichrist will come with those answers. For the whole world to be ruled by one man, it will take something that is literally earth-changing to happen. It will literally take something that will have people questioning their own reality. Just think about it. Look at all the religions in the world. There is no way people will abandon their religions in order to worship a man unless something of the scale of the rapture happens. There is no way nations will agree to be governed by one man unless something of the scale of the rapture was to happen. The saints will leave everything behind and bid farewell to the things of this world without considering the consequence on those that will be left behind. There will be no closure, no time for goodbyes, because the Word of God tells us that this event will happen faster than a twinkling of an eye. Imagine how people will cope with the sudden catching away of their spouses after the rapture. Consider the emotional devastation that such people will be in one will be taken and one will be left. They will think back to the times when their loved ones spoke to them about the rapture. They will think back to the times their loved ones spoke to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. They will think back and say, they were right all along. I didn't believe them, but they were right. Now, I want you to think of people who profess to be believers, but are not. Think of those who have a form of godliness but deny its power. Think of those who have a mind full of knowledge of the Word of God, but a heart full of hell. Think of those who believe they are children of God, but they have a false assurance of heaven. Imagine how they will feel to know that the Great Tribulation is about to begin. Think of those people who were modern-day Pharisees, who spent their days on earth pointing the finger at others at how they don't meet the standard of Christ not considering the fact that the rapture will be for just old-fashioned sinners saved by the grace of God. I am sure the church-building moments after the rapture will be full of self-righteous people who saw themselves as being above others, the people who thought they were good enough to be raptured because of their own merit. Hold on to Jesus. Jesus is the assurance of salvation and not your good works or behavior. God is a merciful God, and He loves you. Yes, He loves you. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 reads, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffered to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The delay in the coming of the Lord is not as a result of failure or weakness to bring what he has determined into reality. God cannot fail. What most people refer to as delay in the coming of the Lord is actually an act of mercy which God is extending to sinners. God does not want anyone to perish. He is delaying the return of the Lord Jesus Christ so that sinners will have the opportunity to repent. It is not the will of God for anyone to go to hell. Therefore, he is patiently waiting for all to come to repentance. We, in our finite mind and finite understanding, perceive the weight of the second coming of the Lord as a delay. But in actuality, 
It is not a delay whatsoever. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will happen on the appointed time according to God's timing. Any perceived delay from our perspective is due to the long suffering of God. Think about it. If the Lord returned 10 years ago, or maybe even 20 years ago, do you think that you would have been raptured? This very moment, all across the world, there are people coming to know Christ, coming to the Lord. That's the heart of the Father. God has the heart of a loving Father. His heart isn't like our hearts. He is God of compassion, a God that wants His creation to spend eternity with Him.